Joseph Perez, better known as Scent Rock, is a self-taught muralist and street artist. Joseph, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so right now, your signature character is the Bird City Saint, the boy with the bird mask. And um, that's what we see a lot of the times when we're in Chicago looking at your work. But you were in Phoenix before this, right? Correct. Yeah, that's where I was uh, born. Okay. I was born in West Phoenix, raised out there, and then moved out here um, and enrolled at Columbia College down the street from here. So, so um, before you got here, or before you developed that character, what were some fixtures in your work? Uh, <clears throat> I guess just everyday life, like the way I grew up, the things I've seen, uh, the neighborhoods that I lived in, communities that you know I was brought up in. I think that all helped develop and share, you know, create the character that I've created, but also the underlining story and and uh, the direction of my of my art for sure. Yeah, um, there there's a there's that S uh -huh, kind right, of thing. Does right. that is that something that came up for you a lot, like when you were starting to first starting out with your work? Yeah, so you know, as a kid, that's the first like graffiti S type like what I was introduced to like yeah. when I seen graffiti I was like oh this is so dope and then when my friend taught me how to do that s I was like oh this is like this super gangster right here this is what I like <laughs> and so you know I always bring that back bring it back to that because that's where like the fundamentals of my art comes from mm -hmm. just kind of like that childlike ambition to just be free with your art and expression so that it, it, you know it's always like full circle moments with that like bringing it back to like what I'm doing having shows, um, exhibitions, whatever projects I do, I always think about, like, you know, the kid in me that, that really appreciates those moments. Yeah. Do you feel like you had that freedom when you were a kid? When I was a kid? Uh, no. Nah, I, mm -mm. nah, <laughs> I think that's why so much of it, like, comes out, like, in my art. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so when did you come to Chicago? That was probably about mm, maybe, like, 12 years ago now. Okay. So, yeah, it's been about 12 years I've been here. Went went to Columbia, went for about two years, and dropped out. I was like, all right, I'm good. Like, you know, this is cool, but they want a lot of money <laughs> and too much time, and I'd rather just make art and, you know, do my thing. Yeah, pay to make art. Get paid to make art. Yeah, exactly. To pay to make art, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, was that around a time that the Bird City Saint developed? Yeah, it's always been kind of like developing. Even when I got introduced to art through graffiti, it was like I like drawing birds, like my little characters. Like I would write scent, oh. S-E-N-T, like my graffiti letters, and then I will draw like a little character or draw like little birds. So it was always this like idea of like finding freedom through my art. And then, you know, I started getting invited to do murals. And then I was like, all right, let me share the story of like this character. I created it for people to... Um, you know, because you know, moving here, I didn't have no family, I didn't have no friends. Mm. So I was like, let me create something that people can, you know, identify me with. So then people started seeing that character, and then they were able to, like, oh, that's, you know, this artist. And then I was able to be invited to different shows and projects, you know, because they were able to identify that signature, um, like, you know, bird mass. So. Yeah. Tell me about the connection between the bird and freedom for you. Yeah, um... <clears throat> so, like I said, like since I was a kid, I've always wanted this idea of freedom. And I think a lot of that had to do with, uh, I guess, the environments that I grew up. You know, it's very similar to, like, you know, growing up in, like, any hood. You know, you kind of feel like you, you don't have that freedom to just go outside and be a kid because mm -hmm. there's so much going on. And even with my family facing, like, uh, I guess, just, like, you know, st stuff that comes with, with those environments, such as, like, that street life, being incarcerated or anything like that. You grew up in the city. Yeah, basically. You know, I grew up in the hood. I grew up with my pops doing this thing out in the street. Uh, even on my mom's side, all my family was into the neighborhood stuff. And so, like, as a kid, it was like, all right, I just want to be free. Like, because I, I, I didn't know how to find that. So mm -hmm. art was that for me. So the bird represented that for me because it's such a, like, simple character. You know, you go outside, everybody sees a bird. You don't necessarily get in introduced to, like, the history of, like, 
my Aztec and Mayan indigenous roots, you know, until I get older. But as a kid, you see a bird, you're like, wow, that's that's dope. They go fly past all these barriers, little fences and wherever, you know, and it, I think I just grabbed onto that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about, I don't know about the Aztec um, and Mayan connection there. Uh, you know, I think, yeah, before, you know, Mexicans, the, or the phrase Mexican, you know, it was it was we're all indigenous. That's where we come from, yeah. the Mayan or or Aztec roots. And then you know when the Spaniards came and colonized, that's what created Mexican, the Mexica, and um, or mestizo, my fault, mestizo, which is basically the blend. But before that, we're all indigenous. And then you know that indigenous roots comes with so much of like mass characters too. Oh, they use okay. like whether it's coyotes oh. or eagles. That symbolize things. You know, as a kid, you don't know that. But yes. as you get older, like, oh, I kind of see connections with my work and my and my heritage. But that's that. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. But yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice when you you feel something that's kind of intuitive and then you right. see you learn about it and you're right. like, wow, that actually is pretty resonant. Like right. it, it comes around full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Would you say, I, I hear you talking about your childhood a lot and, and kind of wanting that freedom that you eventually got through your art. Um, would you say that the the bird, the boy with the bird mask mm -hmm. is a self-portrayal? Is it a self-portrait? I wouldn't say self-portrait, more of like a self-reflection mm -hmm. of my life and a lot of people that I grew up with, you know, like I take... A lot of it is very personal. Like, this is how I felt growing up. But I also know there's so many other kids that relate to that or mm -hmm. people that resonate with that. Like, today, uh, someone DM'd me um, just like, hey, I've been incarcerated for so many years or so much time, and I saw your mural in the uh, the Chicago Sun-Times. I forgot they did, like, a feature on me. And he's like, I cut it out, and I have it in. Like, I've had, I, like, just stared at it. And that's what, like, resonated for me as a kid is, like, my pops being incarcerated. I would, like, draw pictures send it to, you know, mail it to him and wow. he'll be able to, and he would like tell me like, oh, it's dope. Keep sending me more art. So that's what like motivated me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a double, a double meaning or a double reflection because it's like, there's the bird that kind of right. represents freedom, but right. then the drawings themselves are like a connection to the outside as well. Right. Yeah. And then, so that's like, you know, with the character, it's like this little boy with a mask. And I feel like, you know, it does reflect my childhood but I know that so many people can, you know, resonate with it, that they can put themselves behind the mask, kind of. Mm. Wow, that's really beautiful. That's, yeah. that's a great, that's a great, <laughs> oh, great soundbite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so in addition to um, the, the character with the mask, your work features something I really appreciate, which is flowers, mm -hmm. cacti, mm -hmm. other animals, dogs, butterflies. Um, I would love to hear you talk about including other living things that aren't people in your work. Yeah, it's, it's all about just adding different elements to share the story. Um, I think when I add, yeah, whether it's like plants or dogs or, or other birds or um, different elements, it's to add to that story or add to the environment of where that character is at. Um, mm. Yeah, and it, yeah, it just creates more of like, I feel like my work is a visual narrative. Like when you see it, it's like this full story of what's going on. Or it's like a, a page to a larger chapter and then with that chapter there's a larger book or a larger, uh, you know, series of, of stories to be told. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there's a common thread of a story in all of the work that you do or do you feel like it is these like, this mural is this story, you know, this other pieces this other story yeah no it all ties in because yeah. i feel like when i do one mural i'm like damn i really say all i wanted to say with this so this <laughs> yes. is just one piece of the puzzle and then the next project i get like all right i want to share this part of it and then this part and okay yeah so it's all like pieces to a bigger puzzle at least of how i feel you know artists yeah. artists get so emotional like because that's <laughs> they just live in their head all day like all right how can i share this or i've been thinking about this let me let me share this with with this drawing and some people just like you said like oh I like how you have flowers in your work and to me I'm like overthinking it like this rose represents growing <laughs> from this environment and it's blossoming and the red represent you know it's like yeah. most people are like all right that's cool and all but I have to allow the viewer to interpret it how they want to view it too 
Yeah. I mean, but that those types of details are good for people like me who are like going to ask you questions about, you know, why did you do this and how did you do that? So right. um, I think and that, that definitely resonates of like you never with with one piece, you're never going to be able to include or create exactly, you know, the way that you you want to convey what you're trying to convey. But you can just do your best and, and wait for the next opportunity to come to do more. Yeah, of course. I think about, you know, like legendary artists, like the greats, like Picasso or Van Gogh. Like we might know five paintings, you know, the average person might know like two or three paintings, but you don't just, you know, judge them off those one or two works that, you know, you judge them off their entire story, their entire life, huh. like what they what they added, you know, to to the world, basically. Yeah, you would hope. You, would, I think every artist hopes that they're judged, yeah, by, right. by their body of right. work. Yeah, um, and, you know, we just had, like, Martin Luther King Day, um, and you don't just think about, like, oh, remember he did that one thing, that one speech. It was his entire yes. body of work that all comes together. Yeah. Speaking of a body of work, um, First of all, congratulations on your show being extended <laughs> at thank the you. Elmhurst Art Museum. Yeah, thank you. Um, we I went there yesterday, and I didn't realize that it, you told me that it took up three rooms, right. but I didn't realize that it took up all the rooms the entire in, museum. <laughs> in yeah. the museum. I was like, yeah. oh, but there's other rooms, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, to me, that sweetens things a lot because, you know, it it's extended by popular demand, so it really kind of means like, Folks are like, this is all I want to see, right. <laughs> you know, right. at this museum, which is really dope. Um, can you tell me how the installation came about? Yeah, it came about uh, the the curators from the museum, Elmhurst Art Museum, came to my studio. And I think at the time they were just visiting artist studios or they're kind of getting, you know, trying to check the pulse of like, you know, what's going on. Lay like, of the land. What, yeah. So, you know, it was about two years before the exhibition happened. And... I kind of figured, like, all right, they they might want to do something. And you never really know, you know, maybe they want to just do, like, a one-day live art project. Or maybe they want to do a T-shirt design. or maybe. So I don't really know. So, you know, we're just talking, and I'm just, you know letting, know, letting them know what my art's about. And, you know, John and Sarah, shout out to them, very nice people. Yeah. Um, You know, I think, like, months later, they sent me an email, like, hey, we want to extend a show opportunity. This is our gallery spaces. And I remember talking to my team, and I was like, that's dope. They want to offer, you know, an exhibition space. But I can't, if I'm going to do this, I feel like I kind of want the whole museum. Like, give me, you know, as much as you can give me because I can do a show. I, you know, I could fill up a gallery. Yeah. I could fill up a room, but I needed something that's going to give me a bigger platform to share my story. Yeah. Like, you know, to just make a bigger impact. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you did that? Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like I definitely did that cuz just like like I said people wanting to see the show more and just giving them that space when they walk through the first gallery space and then by the time they're done with it, I feel like they are able to take in like mm. I was you know, there's always still room to grow. Like you're all you're always chasing that like that that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and I feel like I'm still like all right, that felt good to do. That was a good challenge, good learning curves. Yeah. But also I accomplished a lot with that. But I still feel like, all right, that was great. Let me enjoy that. But how can I, you know, push it to the next level? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the it's a it's a great type of push, you know, you're you're searching for that, you know, I call it feeling satiated. Mm. You know. Um, and I think as a creative person, if if you throw any level of curiosity on top mm -hmm. of that, you know, or ambition even, um, you, you never, you know, you're never gonna really reach that point of being satiated, right? But um, what's you're the still word? Chasing. Satiated. A full, satisfied. Satiated, that's a good word. There's a lot of different things going on in the installation. Right. A lot of different mediums. Right. Um, portraying the story that you're telling. Um, I wonder for the parts that you know you did and painted. Mm -hmm. Um, where were they done? Where did you actually do the work? All the work was created in my studio in Pilsen. Okay. Yeah. I have a a studio on 18th Street, right in Pilsen. Um, and yeah, just there. Okay. So, you know, before before the show, I was just in there like every day, you know, morning, morning to night, um, just creating, developing. But even before that, before I even started like working, it was just, let me come up with a storyline. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you walk into the first room, it's I, I to me in my head, I was like, all right, this is the introduction room. Yeah. You get introduced to like, all right, here's a mural on the wall. Here's a painting of like this kid in his room. And then here's like a, a sculpture and then the wheat paste kind of give you an introduction to, mm-hmm. you know, what you're going to see. The next space is like that, the boy's house, the bird house. Um, then you go into the next space. That's like the outdoor space. The kid is on the floor mm. staring up at the sky. Yes. Um, and then you see like the, um, the paleta cart um, sculpture. And then you see the yeah. paintings. And then the, the fourth space is you see the, you know, the full circle moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so were there times when you were like, oh, it, it may be better for me to paint this actually in the space? Like the uh, well, there was like yeah. a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the house I painted at the museum. I've did a lot at the museum just because I don't my my studio is not that big for all of that. Okay. And I think the museum was like, all right, what's bro doing? Like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm gonna paint this wall, guys. I'm gonna wheat paste these posters on the wall. Like, I'm gonna go outside. I gotta redo this. And I was just like literally in the front of the museum, like painting stuff yeah. and like cutting stuff. And, you know, they were real supportive, but I'm pretty sure they're like, uh, we don't typically do that. Because yeah. like, if you've been, you went to the museum, you've seen it's a beautiful building. The outside is nice. Like, you know, and I was just using it like it was my studio. Yeah. And But I just knew, like, you know, I had to do that. So, yeah, like the sculpture, like the birdhouse, the, like the wooden sculpture, um, the wee paste, the, the mural, even creating the installation of like the out outdoor space of like the giant the giant uh sculpture of the boy laying on the ground mm-hmm. like you know yeah we developed all that like in the space okay um a lot of your work outside of the museum just mm-hmm. all the rest of your work almost um mm-hmm. that you do original work is big canvases, right? Like walls, buildings. Right. Um, and I wonder, you know, for the installa- for the um, exhibit, you know, you, you kind of zoomed in, you got small, you had some smaller canvases, and I wonder what that process was like for you to go from so big to those smaller canvases. Um, yeah, I, it, was, it wasn't that hard of a transition because I okay. think when I'm typically working in my studio work or like work on canvas, I typically work, you know, I have to learn to work smaller. And, but it was just, for me, it was just more of like, all right, how can I, like, what works do I show? Because I have maybe like 10 pieces up. And for me, I could do like 20 or I could do, you oh. know, it's like, all right, what specific, you know, works do I want to display here or what stories do I want to share here? And okay. Like what fits and what doesn't fit. So you're always kind of in between the big and smaller space yeah i feel like i need that balance Mm. like i'll do you know a large mural and then i'm like all right i just want to sketch and then i'll sketch for two weeks straight like all right time to work on some canvas Mm. um and yeah i feel like i'm having more like understanding of what i want to do with my work now um i I feel like now just recently i'm like all right i can kind of sit back and i've done you know so many solo shows now that I did this museum, I've done so many murals. Like, all right, let me sit back and what do I want to do with my work or how do I even space it out in my head? Mm-hmm. What do you think brought you to that reflection point right now? Uh, to be honest, I think just accomplishing, you know, certain goals. But then also, like, I started going to therapy, just kind of, like, help me understand, like, why is my brain, like, thinking, you know, certain things? Yeah. And I think she's just been, you know, shout out to my therapist. She's just kind of even helping me think like, all right, there's a method where you can do this. It's called, she called it chunking, where you don't have to take one goal. Like, oh, like, all right, my goal is to create art for the museum. Like, no, break it down. Like today, this week, mm-hmm. one one piece of my goal is to secure supplies. And sometimes, you know, growing up in certain environments, you feel like you just got to like get everything and you got to, you know, do as much as you can, grab as much as you can. And you feel like you're always working behind the eight ball, like you're always behind the clock. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, like, like just take your time, do what you have to do. You know, value your small victories, value. And another thing too, all right, not since we brought this up. Another yeah. thing too, she taught me. She was, te- I guess we're just having a discussion. Yeah. You know, there, there's more value in your stories and your art than just outside of the trauma. You know, you don't have to just value trauma. Like, there's value 
in the work that you want to create. So I've been learning too, like, all right, I don't have to just find like, all right, let me just find a, a place in a place of this affected me or this affects my community or X, oh. Y, Z. It's like, no, like I can value, maybe I just want to value the idea of like my character just being happy, you know, with his, with his dog. Like it doesn't <laughs> have to be like this whole underlining narrative of like social economics and, you know, and so I feel like I've been kind of like being able to find peace with that. Like, all right, let, let me breathe. Let my soul breathe a little bit. Wow. Mm. That is so beautiful. Yeah. I feel like I just went super deep. Like, no, that, <laughs> that is so valuable. Um, yeah. I, I think, first of all, shout out to therapy. It'll take For you sure. places. <laughs> yeah. It, I just started maybe like six months ago. And I'm like, oh, OK, this is not what I thought it was oh. in, in a, you know, in a good way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, pleasantly surprised because, you know, sometimes when you think about it around TV shows, you're sitting there and you think that this person would like is judging you and you have to like just open up your entire like, you know, safe space of like trauma that you've been through. But uh -huh. really, it's just let's just talk. Let's let's understand things. Let's allow me to self-reflect and understand things at my own pace. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the piecemeal piece as well of just like okay, step one isn't all the steps. Right, <laughs> You right, know, right. like step one is step one, and then there's a step two. Right. Um, and I think... Yeah, and finding the value in that and, like, the small victories in, in those small steps. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, these these issues that you're talking about, like, like you know, these social economic, social mm -hmm. justice issues, right. they are really big, right. you know? And I think sometimes, you know, it's a driver for the things that you create, but... Right. Um, like you said, it doesn't always have to be the entire point. Right. You know, right. there's so much or more. Or the only thing that, that drives you or you're chasing for. Yeah. Um, so in the installation, I've seen some lowriders. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, um, you know, there's such a, a beautiful culture around those. And I wonder if you've been a part of that culture or where that came came from for you. Yeah. Did I do lowriders? Oh, uh, there's a pink I? one where the the boy is laying back, the big styrofoam where he's laying back looking at the sky. There's like a pink. Oh, right? like the lowrider low bikes. Low yeah, 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 yeah. Lowrider bikes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Distinguished because there's also the lowrider car culture. The car, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're all they're all together. Yeah. But you know, as a kid, he don't he don't have his license yet, so <laughs> he don't have no keys yet. Uh, but yeah, lowrider bikes. That's how I grew up too, like okay. West Phoenix. It's very like, you know, you think West Coast, you think like L.A., like my grandfather has like a 1959 Impala. He was in a car club. Um, you know, my mom has a dope truck. It, all my family, they got like, you know, low rider car is a part of like, uh, is a part of like what I consider, I consider myself Chicano, which is like Mexican that was born and raised in the United States mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of that blend of, of culture. And that's really big with us because it's like, you know, sometimes we don't have a lot to fall back on. So we have our culture of like, all right, but I got this dope. I got this this dope car that I've, you know, hooked up how I wanted to hook yeah. up. That's like, to me, that's that's also like art, you know. That's their own art form. For sure. And yeah. so, you know, having, I remember going to like car shows and seeing like the bikes, how people would hook them up and do their, on the side, like airbrush paintings and stuff. So that really inspired me. And I think it's just a reflection too, like I said, of, of my culture, um, and sharing that that story, that that side of the story. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an art form. It's very precise as well. Yeah, yeah, very precise and very, um, you know, the Midwest. I feel like is is starting to grow more. At least Chicago. Like there, is, I know a ton of people out here with with dope cars, but yeah. I think it's a little bit tougher out here because of the uh, weather. You know, like. You know, when the winter comes, you can't really pull out the cars like that. Versus in the West Coast, in the winter, that's when people bring their cars out because it's like 60, 70 degrees. Yeah, perfect, perfect temperature. <laughs> yeah, but I know a lot of dudes out here that, man, they go crazy with their cars. And um, they have, uh, what's the event? I think it's called Slow and Low out here. Okay. They did it right here at Navy Pier uh, like a few months back. And they just took over the whole space with a ton of low rider cars and bikes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's yeah, it's really fun to go to go to those car shows and people stunt. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then 
also within the installation, you have some, uh, like I said, a lot going on, all different mm -hmm. types of things, um, different mediums. And I know you collaborated um, with a lot of folks on those. Right. And I wonder, um, how did you decide what types of mediums? There's some woodwork and, and things like that. How did you decide which other mediums you wanted to include? I just wanted to include anything that, that helped share the story. Mm -hmm. You know, with the mural that I did directly on the wall, Yeah, like they get, they gave a piece of my expression that, you know, is very you know, close to me. Like I'm always, that's one of my first things, painting on walls. And then I was like, all right, how do I do an installation? How do I create a sculpture? How do I create an animation that's projected? Mm. And then for me, you know, how, how do I work with somebody to help me do this? Mm -hmm. um, how, who, who can I team up with someone on my team? Or can we outsource somebody that can help me build this giant sculpture um, or this animation? Whatever it is, it was just like, how can I share more of the story? And I've been wanting to learn how to develop <clears throat> that story, but outside of just me. Like, everything is created by my hands. Like, no, sometimes I just want to put the vision out there. Yeah. You know, like, you think about just like yeah. Walt Disney. He had ideas. He didn't say, all right, I need to create every movie and every, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, or you think about designers, fashion designers. Then, I'm like, all right, let me cut and sew every piece. Sometimes yeah. you have the idea and the vision. Who can you work with to present that to the world? Mm. So that I think that was my approach. Yeah. yeah. Very, very big picture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah always. I yeah. feel like, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, shoot for the moon, you know, or shoot for the stars down on the moon type of type of vibe. So, yeah. Um, so I wonder about other collaborations that you've done. Um, I know you you've worked with toy companies, you've worked mm -hmm. with illustrators What's the collaboration that's making you really excited right now? Well, right now, like the most recent collaboration that I've kind of have been working on, um, there's been a couple. But one that I'm really excited about just because, you know, moving to Chicago and being able to work with um, with the Chicago legend has been, has been you know, an accomplishment, a, a goal for sure. Like almost like a... Like, you never feel like, oh, I made it, but you feel like, all right, I'm like, this feels good. Yeah. So I'm working on a project with Lupe Fiasco right now that he, uh, working on basically, it's like art reflecting the art. Like, so he created uh, music, like, you know, created a, a song, a track about my art, and then I took the track and I created an art piece based off of that that mm -hmm. song. It's, yeah, I guess it's very meta or it's very like, you know. Like it's levels. Serve. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, I'm like, yeah, that's very much him. Like, okay. And yeah. then even listening to the song, I'm like, hold on, let me run that back. What do you say? <laughs> oh, yeah, that is what my art's about. <laughs> like, you know, he dis he like wow. dissected my art more than like sometimes I am. I am able to. Because sometimes yeah. as artists, you're just creating, like you're letting stuff off. And then you take somebody, you know, like Lupe Fiasco, who's teaching at MIT now. And he's able to break down, you know, certain things. So... I took that track, which was all about my art, which is weird, and then I created an art piece off of basically that. Um, and then so we're gonna create prints. We're gonna do like vinyl, um, a vinyl record off of it, and then hopefully, you know, if our schedules align, we can do an event together and okay. and present that. So, that's, okay, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're working on the vinyls now. Yeah, okay. yeah. So all the the artwork is done, the music is done, the artwork is done. It's just about. Um, getting everything uh, created and, and produced right now. Okay. Keep us yeah. posted. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I'm really excited about it. I wish I had a date. I know yeah, it's going to come out this month or next month. But I'll definitely have to, uh, you know, send everybody here um, the the invitation to come out. Yeah. I'd love for you guys to come. Yeah. Joseph Perez, also known as Scent Rock, is a self-taught muralist and street artist. Joseph, thank you so much for being here. Anytime. Thank you.